Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Alex and in today's video we're going to look at some common problems that happen uh, with the winding stem. Uh, a lot of times someone will pull a winding stem out and they can't get it to lock back in. Or you may have a watch where the winding stem um, is not functioning properly. Uh, you can't pull it into different positions or if you pull it out into position two, as an example, the quick date change function may not work, or you pull it out into position three and the winding doesn't work. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, or if you're having that problem, let's get started. So our, for our demonstration today, we have a old ETA 2824 that we're going to use. Um, this one is actually missing the rotor on the back. So let's go ahead and dive into it. The first thing we need to do is remove the hands. Hand levers and gently pry the hands off. Now on this ETA movement, the dial is held on with two dial feed clamps. Here's one to open them. I'm just gonna pry it out. Then the dial should just lift right off. Now, before we put this movement in the movement holder, we're gonna go ahead and close the dial clamps so they don't get damaged. Now the area that we need to get in is located right under here. So we're going to go ahead and strip the movement down and then we're going to build it back up and I'm going to go over the parts and what you need to look for as far as troubleshooting and correcting the problem. So to strip the movement down, we're going to start with the hour wheel. Now we'll remove the minute train bridge. Now we will remove the date indicator maintaining plate. And we'll remove the date indicator. Now the minute wheel, the setting wheel, and the date corrector. Now we'll remove the setting lever jumper. the yoke, the setting lever, the corrector lever. Now we could pull the winding stem, the sliding pinion, 
and the winding wheel. When a stem will not stay in the movement, the first logical place to look is going to be the stem itself. Here we're looking at our stem and the setting lever. The groove right here is where this pin from the setting lever sits in. It is that pin in, sitting in this groove that holds the stem into the movement. This pin that you're looking at, that's what you actually push from the other side of the movement that raises the setting lever up, allowing that pin to come out of that groove. This collar right here, this is the stop position for the winding stem that we'll see in a minute. And then of course, this part of the stem is square. And this is where the sliding pinion moves back and forth and engages with this free spinning wheel called the winding wheel. The other possible problem is this pin at the very end of the stem, which fits into a hole in the main plate, the stem can get bent by somebody forcibly trying to, to push the stem in. So if this is bent or broken, the stem will need to be replaced as well. So let's start putting this watch back together and start looking at the components and go about the troubleshooting. We'll start by installing the winding wheel. Now on the ETA 2824, there's a piece right here called the locking lever. What the locking lever does is when the crown is pulled out to the third position, it slides it to this position and stops the balance wheel from spinning. You can see the balance spinning, slide it forward, the balance stops. The reason I'm showing you that is because that locking lever needs to sit in the groove of the sliding pinion, which is right there. Now, when you're inserting the stem, this square part of the stem will need to go through the square part of the sliding pinion and then into the hole, which is under here. So sometimes it takes a little finagling to get it to go in, but just take your time. Sometimes you have to give it a little spin to get it to fit in. Our next piece going in is called the corrector lever. And what this piece does is it basically corrects the position of the setting wheel, which goes right here, as well as correcting the position of the yoke. So let's take a look at the setting lever again. So to start with, we have the long pin. That's the release pin that sticks through the hole that you press on, which pushes the locking pin out of the stem. This pin actually pulls the correcting lever into the second and third position. On the top side of the setting lever, this is the uh, yoke pin. This pin sits in a notch in the setting lever yoke 
that holds it in positions one, two, and three. So that pin cannot be damaged, bent, or broken. And this little notch right here, that interacts with the pin on the corrector level lever, which establishes the position of uh, the first position, position one. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Now to set the locking pin so that it fits into the groove on the stem, I find it best just to apply a small amount of pressure on the setting lever while pulling the stem gently in and out. And you can see it's locked into so it won't pull out of the watch. And it's also engaging properly with the corrector lever. Now with these pieces sitting in position one, I just slide the sliding pinion tight against the winding wheel. That's where it would normally sit in position one. And now we can add the yoke. The yoke sits in the groove of the sliding pinion. So when the yoke changes position, it moves, it moves the sliding pinion back and forth through the various positions. One common problem that can happen if some of these parts get bent or damaged is that the yoke can actually jump out of that groove and get caught in between the sliding pinion and the winding wheel. If the yoke gets underneath the setting lever, it will not let the setting lever go low enough so that the locking pin can engage in the groove on the stem and it can't be locked in. You might be able to see the release pin, but you won't be able to maneuver it in order to lock it. Another symptom of the yoke being out of the groove is when you can't wind the watch or switch to any of the other positions like second or third and the and the stem just feels like it's stuck in and it's not doing anything that's because the yoke has jumped out of the groove but it's not under the setting lever but it's not allowing the uh, winding stem to have any function at all so if your winding stem is stuck and you can't wind, you can't pull into any other position, your yoke has jumped out of the groove and is in between the sliding pinion and the winding wheel. Now we're looking at the setting lever yoke before we put it in place because I wanted to point out a couple things first. One, this is the yoke spring. The yoke spring puts tension on the yoke at this point right here. And that tension is required to keep the sliding pinion tight against this winding wheel. If that spring is not on this part of the yoke, the watch will not be able to wind. It'll just spin like this. But when the sliding pinion is down and tight, then the watch will wind. The other part is what holds this yoke into the sliding pinion so it does not come out of the groove is this arm and this arm. If those are bent or the screw is loose, 
that will enable the yoke to come out and all these parts can really get just jumbled up. This part of the setting lever jumper has three notches in it, which interact with the setting lever pin here. And that's what holds the stem into the first, second, or third position. And then lastly is this spring adds a little bit of tension to the setting lever. And what that does is it allows that release pin to be pushed from the other side of the movement, which essentially allows that little pin that locks into the groove on the stem, it allows it to be pushed up just enough so the stem can be pulled out. So if any of these parts are bent or broken, that will need to be replaced. So let's go ahead and install that. So with the setting lever jumper installed, we are in the first position and we can turn the stem and we can feel the watch being wound. If this spring is not in this position, and it's sitting on top of the yoke. The sliding pinion will not make contact with the winding wheel and the watch will not hand wind. So we put it back in position and now we can hand wind. These arms are keeping the pressure on the yoke to keep it in the groove. And this spring is applying pressure to the setting lever to keep the pin in the groove so the stem cannot pull out of the watch. Now to continue with our assembly, we'll install the minute wheel on the ETA 2824, the setting wheel, the top of the teeth are rounded on one side. You wanna make sure that side is facing up. So we'll drop in the setting wheel. And the date corrector. Now you'll notice in position one, <clears throat> when, the hand, when the watch is being wound by hand, the setting wheel does not move. When you pull the watch into the second position, the setting wheel engages with the day corrector, which in turn will be turning the date indicator wheel and that is your quick date function when you pull the stem into the third position the setting wheel is going to advance it makes contact with the minute wheel which allows the hands to be turned to set the time. This part here is called the date jumper. This is a spring 
the spring needs to fit in between the teeth of the date indicator. So the easiest way to get this in is to just gently slide it over so that this part of the spring is in between the teeth. And the wheel will stay in position. The date indicator jumper, essentially what its function is, is it holds the date indicator ring in a specific position so that the date is centered in the date window on the dial. So now we'll install the date jumper maintaining plate. Now we can install the minute wheel bridge. And finally, let's check all functions of all three positions. So first position. So first position, the watch winds. So now when we pull to the second position, the setting wheel should engage with the date corrector wheel, which in turn should move the date indicator in the quick date function. That's working properly. So now when we pull to the third position, one thing that should happen is in this particular movement, because it has a hacking feature, is we should see the balance stop moving. The setting wheel will advance forward, make contact with the minute wheel, which will turn the cannon pinion. So the balance is stopped. The minute wheel is turning. Now to reinstall the dial. Flip the watch over and open the dial clamps. Install the hour wheel. When the hour wheel is installed in the third position, it completes the train. So now the minute wheel, the hour wheel, and these two wheels will also rotate. So everything looks like it's functioning properly. Now we'll reset the dial. Flip the movement back over. Apply gentle pressure while we close the dial clamps. And now we're ready to put the hands on.
to install the watch hands, uh, the hour hand being the first one, the first thing we need to do is we need to move all the wheels in the setting train so that the dial indicator flips over to the next date. That way we know it's exactly midnight. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, once you see the date indicator starting to move, you want to slow down and go very slowly so that you can stop winding right at the point where the date indicator snaps over. And there we have 12 o'clock midnight high. So we'll start by installing the hour hand. When installing the hour hand, once you lay it in position, on the stem that's sticking up from the hour wheel. You want to eyeball exactly in the middle. In this particular case, we're using the 60, the area right in the center of the 60, as our uh, area that we want that to be pointing towards. I like to give the hand just a little, little light press. Just to kind of hold it in position. And then with a hand press tool, Gently press the hand on. One of the things you want to make sure of is that the top of the hand is flush with the top of the post that's sticking out of the hour wheel. And that looks good. Now we're going to wind the watch around again and check it at the midnight again. Once we get to 11 o'clock, we're going to start coming in slow. Because we want to see exactly where the hand position is when midnight hits. It looks to be a little bit off, so we're going to go around one more time and check it again. That looks off, so we're going to pull the hand and we're going to reset it one more time.
Now we'll check it again at midnight. And that looks good. Now to install the minute hand, we're going to do the same process again. Lay the minute hand on. Check it, slide it down the hand. sure I didn't move it So the goal with this hand is to have the top of the minute hand sitting flush to the top of the cannon pinion. As well as the hands being parallel, not touching each other, with an equal distance between them along the length of the hand. Now there's a couple of, a couple of additional checks we do. One is we want to ensure that when the minute hand is pointing at the 60 second mark, we want to make sure that the hour hand is pointing at the three hour mark. And then we'll check it again at nine o'clock. Okay, so now we can go around again and check the spot that the minute hand actually triggers the date correction. Our goal is straight up midnight, but as long as we're within 30 seconds plus or minus of that mark, we'll be good. So we're coming up here. We're at four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute, and there's our day change. So I can see that we're within a minute, and it looks like we're within 30 seconds, if not less of that. So that's good. Let's go ahead and put our second hand on. And the last thing we need to check is our clearance between the second hand and the minute hand.
And there we are. We're good to go. So if you've stuck through all the way, I want to thank you. Hopefully you learned a little bit of troubleshooting today. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.